Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be taking the Happy Booktuber tag. So this was originally created by Harriet Rosie, and I was tagged in it by Bucky Lara. Two fantastic channels I will link below to uh, their videos so you can check those out. And we have 10 questions here. I'm going to go through and answer each of those 10 questions, and then we're going to tag some people at the end. That's how these things work. So let's jump straight on in. Question number one, have you ever lied about reading a book? I don't think so, but it's possible. And it's also possible, in fact, likely that I have been confused and I've thought I've read a book when I didn't. Or for example, Anne Frank's Diary. For many years I thought I'd read, read Anne Frank's Diary and it turned out to be an abridged version, so I still need to read that at some point. I will. Don't, don't worry about it, I will. Uh, so yeah, I probably accidentally lied. The only other thing that comes to mind is uh, Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. And this was because uh, I was studying London and Literature at university. And we had a different book we had to read uh, each week for the lectures. And uh, Mrs. Dalloway was the only one that I couldn't push myself through in time for the lecture. So I pretended I'd read it even though I hadn't. But I don't think anybody ever asked me. So I don't think I had to lie about it. I think I just sort of styled it out and just pretended that I knew what everyone was talking about. And then I eventually finished it uh, via audiobook. It became my most hated book of all time. And then I reread it probably uh, last year or, or earlier this year. And I thought it was okay. I think it was last year. It was last year's rereadathon. Question number two Have you ever avoided a book because of controversy around the content slash author? I guess, like, yes. Orson Scott Card, I guess. I, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't say I was ever going to pick up his books, though. It's just now I'm definitely not going to pick up his books. I've been putting off uh, Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Kerr. Fur, rather. Because <laughs> um, I think it was something to do with... Uh, so there was some celebrity, and, and it was quite a well-known celebrity. And basically, he kind of... Oh, fuck it. I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to Google this. Shout out to uh, shout out to Mark Nash for actually letting me know this was a thing as well, because he told me this, and it did it did Mark. You totally put me off reading that book. This was like six nine months ago. You told me this. Still not read it. Uh, all right, Jonathan. There we go. I googled it before. That was it. It was uh, Natalie Portman. So uh, basically. Jonathan Safran Fur, while he was work working on this book, I think he was talking to Natalie Portman because she's like a vegan and uh, animal rights advocate and they sent a lot of kind of emails between each other. I'll link below so where you can read this uh, full article. Basically, I think they were saying things that they weren't supposed to have been saying to each other via email. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm gla glazing over the, the subject. Basically because um, Mark was like, yeah, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? I was like, I looked into it and I was like, that was a bit weird. Maybe I'll put this off for a little bit. But I'll probably get to there eventually. I don't tend to have too much of a problem with uh, separating the art from the artist. Uh, as is the case with Bukowski, one of my favourite authors. Terrible person, but uh, the man can write. Could write. Sorry, he's dead now. Which is probably for the best. It also makes it easier to separate the art from the artist when the artist is dead. Question number three. Have you ever been sent a book for free and not disclosed it? Yes. I know for a fact I've done this. Uh, I try to disclose it when I remember. Even in things like reading vlogs, for example, it would just... I can't say every time I talk about a book, by the way, this was sent to me for review. I try to mention it if I do review it on uh, Booktube and on my book review site, I put disclaimers on all of them when they've been sent to me for free. But to be honest, I don't get sent that many books for free anymore. I used to get loads, but I, I don't have the time to read them all. So it's usually enough, in, unusual enough that I would mention it, if that makes sense. Question number four, have you ever bought a book with no intention of reading it? Yes, when I've bought them as gifts for other people. Does nobody else do that? Nothing that's gone onto my TBR is be with, without the intention of reading it. But yeah, I mean, I've bought books for other people. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah, bought copies of my own books that I sell on to people. I'm not going to reread each one of them. Question number five. Have you ever got caught up in booktube drama? I don't think so. I don't know, maybe I have and I was just totally oblivious and unaware of it. Um, I try not to get involved in booktube drama because I really don't care, uh, you know. And there, there always seems to be some sort of drama that everyone's talking about and everyone has an opinion and usually I, I don't even have an opinion because I don't, I don't care. But um, have I been caught up in booktube drama? I don't think so. I mean, the biggest, the biggest drama that I've been caught up with was when uh, Ghost Reader and Chapter Kate were having their like Christmas wars, and they were they were trying to make the, they were trying to out Christmas each other on the run up to Christmas last year, and uh, 
And even then I was like, I, I like you both, so I'm gonna be impartial. So, <laughs> question number six, have you ever had a hate comment and did you respond? Yes and yes, I guess. Um, not to all of them, I had a few, uh, one, one of my life update videos a little while, while back, I got some comments on that. In fact, I didn't even read the comments. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I glanced through I glanced through them as I was going, but um, by the time I got round to them, it was like three months later anyway, and I was just like, uh, and I ended up deleting the video too, so because it was only really relevant at, the, at that kind of particular point in time. Uh, I had not exactly hate comments, but people who disagreed with my reviews, and like somebody commented on my review of the Shadow of the Wind, being like, "Oh, it went over his head," but that's okay, it's not his fault, and I'm like, "Well, that was really condescending," and so I kind of replied, being like, "I don't think it went over my head. It's just." I didn't like it, like, you know what I mean? I, I mean, everyone takes different things out of different books. I think to to see somebody reviewing a book that you like and them not enjoying it, and for you to be, well, it must have gone over their head, I think that's fucked up, to be honest. Like, And, you know, I quite often see negative reviews of books that I like, or we have, you know, discussions. I really enjoyed um, uh, Robinson Crusoe recently, and again, lots of comments on that were people from people who didn't enjoy it or studied it for school or whatever. We got quite a nice debate going. So, um, yeah, but explicitly hate, I mean, I don't think I've ever ha had too much, too bad. The worst stuff was like, when I was on Pointless, and there's the, the video of that is on my channel, it's one of my first uploads, is that there's actually loads from ages ago, but I deleted them all. But I was on Pointless, the BBC quiz show, and uh, when that aired, I just put in on Twitter while it was on TV, like, hashtag pointless, and was reading all the comments, and there were, like, loads of people being like, oh, you need to get a haircut, uh, like, die in a fire, your girlfriend's too good for you, and all of this stuff, and then there was me just replying to them, being like, well, that's a bit harsh, and then everyone backtracked as soon as they got a reply, because they don't expect it, you know? Question number seven, have you ever made a video just because you knew it would get views? No. This is another thing, people have said this in some of my negative reviews of books, they're like, oh, you're only making this video to get views, and I'm like, you think I'd make a, a review video to get views? That's like the guaranteed way to not get views. Uh, I don't know, I don't know why it, it does happen to be, for some reason, that negative reviews do tend to, in the long run, they get more views, possibly because you get a lot of dislikes on them, and then that feeds into the YouTube algorithm, but I've never specifically thought, I'm going to do this video because it's going to get views. Um, I mean, you're conscious as a creator, you're conscious like in this, this is a tag video, it will probably get more views than my normal videos do. And I, I know which view, you know which types of videos get the most views and uh, also the longest watch times, they don't necessarily go hand in hand. So, uh, you know, tags tend to get me more views, wrap-ups tend to get me more watch time, vlogs get quite good watch time, kind of on average as well. But, I mean, I just, I literally, I see, it confuses me that so many people see booktube as like, you know, you've got to do the cool things, you've got to make this type of video, and you've got to do this, and you've got to do that, and for me it's just a, literally a documented log of my reading, you know, so I don't read books specifically so I can review them and give them a bad review or something, I don't, like, I, I don't, and to be honest, I don't even film negative reviews anymore because it's not worth the hassle and the backlash you get, but like, I don't make videos or read specific books or cover certain subjects because I think that's popular or that's what people are going to enjoy. I just get on with my reading and then the videos I make just log that reading if that makes sense. The reading always comes and, and came first for me I think. Um, and maybe that's just because I have this background with my book blog as well that's been going four or five years now and that's very much the same thing, it's just an ongoing log of reviews of every book that I've read, you know? Question number eight, if you could go back to the beginning of your channel, would you do anything differently? I'd, honestly, I'd spend less time on it. I think when I first started making booktube videos, I'd been watching for several years and I just wanted to get really involved in the community and I probably ended up averaging about an hour a day making booktube videos. This was back when I used to do a video a day as well. These days, I'd probably average half an hour a day, uh, give or take and that's enough for me to do like three, four videos a week, no set sp uh, publishing schedule. But yeah, I think I probably I would just not kill myself trying to make too much content and trying to catch up. Uh, other than that, no, not really. Might have started sooner. <laughs> Question number nine, are there any channels you wish you could be more like? Yeah, loads. Um, I think certain people have just got a really great way in front of the camera and how they deliver information. Uh, so Cam C. Wolf from Wolf Shop Publishing, Daniel Green, The Poptimist, all three of those guys just do... It's just very sleek and very well researched, very professionally presented, just really well done. Harriet's great. Um, 
I don't know if I necessarily wish I could be more like her because I think, although we read different books and stuff, I think we have fairly similar approaches to BookTube, probably because we're both INTJ <laughs> on the Myers-Briggs type, I guess. Kind of like Aussie Man Reviews as well. His stuff is quite funny, quite well put together. <sighs> I don't know man, I don't necessarily think I want to be more like anybody, I just want to do my thing and be in my niche. By the way, if you hear noise it's because the cat's eating his treats. Question number 10, what's something you love about your channel? Just the people I've met through it really, um, I would say that's honestly it. And, uh, and arguably, again I'm in this weird place with booktube where I do tend to enjoy watching it more than creating, although I'm not saying I don't enjoy creating, I just really enjoy watching booktube and, uh, and I think I could still do all that without my channel and I could still have all the friends that I've made, I think having a channel and being able to put my face to the comments that I leave and stuff like that has made me more approachable I guess and helped people to get to know me some more, but really it is, it's the relationships I've made, the people I've met and uh, yeah, that's that's what I love about it. As opposed to I don't know any of the I don't know any of the benefits like watching the analytics or whatever. You know I don't know what do other people love about their channels. I can't remember what Laura said or uh, or Harriet for that matter. And I've seen a bunch of people do this tag, which actually brings me on to unofficial question eleven, which is tag some people. So as always, I'm going to go into uh, my recent list of comments, and I'm just going to tag some people who've recently commented on my videos based on the fact that. Presumably they watch my videos, so they're more likely to see the tag. And uh, shout out to Laura, who has also adopted this uh, this method of tagging people. It's just a lot easier, to be honest. So we're going to tag Graham Sillers Reads Books, Joel Swagman, Hannah Tay, Wolfshot Publishing, of course, Corners of a Bookshelf, The Paper Traveller, Ray B. Shaw, Time for Books, although I don't know if she does tag videos, uh, Emma Rosen Books, uh, oh no, they, Nick Pepper, Ghost Reader and Todd the Librarian and a cheeky, we've got some more, fuck it. Cats and Camera, Big Hard Books and Classics and a Musical Bookworm, that'll do us, lovely. All right, so on that note, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of my answers to this tag. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.